Hello and welcome. Thank you very much for watching this video. My name is Luc Döbereiner and I'm going to present my paper Artistic Potentials of Fallacies in AI Research. The paper is primarily a response to Melanie Mitchell's 2021 paper Why, Why AI is Harder Than We Think. And I very much recommend you read Melanie Mitchell's paper before reading my paper. Melanie Mitchell describes four fallacies in AI research. So these are implicit assumptions and beliefs about perception and intelligence more generally that have actually become sort of internal obstacles to AI research and have also led to many disappointments in the course of the last uh, decades. My paper uses these fallacies as a point of departure to discuss the relation of AI research and artistic practice more generally. Not so much from a utilitarian or problem-solving point of view, but rather in order to identify how frictions and fallacies actually disclose aesthetically productive areas. An important aspect for me is that technology is not to be used to solve pre-existing problems or model artistic creativity generally but rather that art is always entangled with technology. The paper seeks to demonstrate how these four fallacies that Mitchell describes are not only shortcomings with regard to our understanding of intelligence, but how they are actually at the core of what constitutes aesthetics and artistic practice. So if we talk about implicit assumptions about perception and, perception and intelligence, we also come into the area of aesthetics more generally, and we find a certain intersection um, of these implicit assumptions and the field of aesthetics. So my goal is not to contribute to overcoming these fallacies so much, or these obstacles or shortcomings, but rather to sketch aesthetic potentials of these inherent contradictions. I think that Mitchell's paper lets us reflect on possible relations of AI and music. So. My paper aims to serve as a starting point for a discussion on the relation of aesthetic experience, artistic practice, and AI. And um, I also want to add, it's a rather short position paper, so it's by no means exhaustive. And I've all, I'm also not uh, actually referring to particular um, artworks. The first area I want to discuss, I have called general and particular. And it refers to the fallacy that Mitchell describes as the fallacy of first steps. Actually, Mitchell here draws on the philosopher Herbert Dreyfus. This fallacy is the assumption that there is a continuum of intelligence connecting the solutions to specific problems with general intelligence. A breakthrough in a specific area, such as playing chess, is assumed to be a first step towards general intelligence. We know that such a transfer in generalization is very difficult. Models and the data they are trained on are, for the most part, very particular. We now have models that can perform some narrowly defined tasks very well. However, the ability to transfer knowledge from one area to another is poor or lacking. From an artistic point of view, it can be very interesting to explore the particularity of models. What makes aesthetic experience meaningful is the shared experience of a sensuous concreteness, a particularity, such as a particular sound, a particular gesture or melody. For example, a musical composition exposes a specific timbre, as it may be experienced, not the efficacy of spectral transformations in general. Rather than absorbing the specificities of the object in a general concept, aesthetic experience revolves around an object's uniqueness, its singularity, or a moment's unrepeatability. Here is where artistic thought can enter a productive dialectical relation with the abstractions of machine learning. Not in order to overcome the problem of generalization, but in order to aesthetically explore its inherent contradictions, in order to turn it into artistic material. So there's a dialectic of general in particular in the musical work. It 
may be based on rules and abstractions on generative, generative procedures which are general in their nature but ultimately it produces a singularity a singular experience a singular identity that particular composition and not any composition that can be done with these rules um, so I want to quote Adorno here who says who expresses this form of dialectic um, by saying the artwork must present through its own concretion the total nexus of abstraction and thereby resist it the second fallacy in the second area I want to explore here or sketch briefly in this presentation um, has to do with the relationship of what is easy and what is hard um, Mitchell describes it as the idea that easy things are easy and hard things are hard to model with AI technologies researchers and technologists have failed to acknowledge that what is easy for humans may not be easy for machines and what is hard for humans such as playing chess may actually be easier for machines from, a, from an artistic point of view, this fallacy is interesting for at least two different reasons. The, perform, the performative arts, such as music and dance, often play with and in, invert what is easy and what is hard. So, for example, the production of a single tone on a bowed string instrument may be slowed down and appear to be an immensely difficult task full of sonic and physical complexity and likewise something very hard may appear very easy in general arts capacity to problematize what we take for granted here to give it new meaning and to invert the way it normally appears to us in in everyday life is is at play a second way in which this fallacy can be productive from an artistic point of view is how it points to another form of reasoning that is alien to human thought. Deep learning models can produce representations that challenge translation into human epistemic terms, so that are not explicable, that cannot be translated into the realm of human knowledge. Here lies an artistic potential that is tied to the core of aesthetics itself. Finding forms of representation that render experiential what has not yet been perceptible. Art can contribute to developing forms of representation. It can work at forms of translation and transposition of computational and human epistemic realms. The third area is what Mitchell calls wishful mnemonics. Um, so AI research often uses certain anthropomorphizing terms in order to describe abilities to be modeled. Terms such as learning itself, intelligence of course, but also more specifically listening, reading, understanding and vision. And these terms suggest a compatibility between particular machine abilities and human capacities. Such terms are often used to describe and measure these machine abilities. For example, the inexhaustibly complex activity of reading is equated with how well a system can perform a very particular task on a very particular data set. What is productive here, again artistically, is how these vast questions like what is listening, what is understanding, actually themselves come into focus and how the shortcomings in modeling these cap cap capacities, these abilities, actually disclose their inexhaustible complexity. An AI-mediated form of listening changes what sounds means to us and how we experience it. Much like artistic practice, AI transforms these abilities. It changes how we listen, how we view, how we understand, and how we read. It augments, contrasts, caricatures, supplements, distorts, and reduces how we listen, see, and understand. Finally, the topic of corporeality. 
The fourth and final fallacy formulated by Mitchell has to do with the role of the body in cognitive processes. As Mitchell writes, the assumption that intelligence can in principle be disembodied is almost is implicit in almost all work on AI throughout its history. So the idea of disembodied intelligence. Of course, there's a vast amount of research ranging from neuroscience to philosophy and the arts that challenges and debunks the idea of a radical division of body and mind or the idea of a disembodied intelligence. We experience sound, the materiality of a painting, the spatiality of an installation, the bodily presence of an actor, and the movements of a dancer through our bodies. Cognition involves our bodies as a whole, and even larger spatial, social, temporal, historical, and technological contexts. The involvement of the living body in experience is perhaps more evident in listening than in seeing. Listening makes us aware of our own physical presence in the world and our connection to other bodies. As the philosopher Jean-Luc Nancy writes, the sound that penetrates through the ear propagates throughout the entire body. In a sense, in listening we experience ourselves as resonant bodies. Listening is thus a prime example of an irreducible embodied form of of cognition involving non-conscious and bodily forms of resonance. Moreover, computational processes have their own corporeality and materiality. Algorithms may be studied as formal entities, but computational processes run in time while interacting with other computational processes, data and the external world. In a way, the failure to account for the embodiment of human cognition also discloses the failure to acknowledge that algorithms have their own specific form of embodiment. Artistically, we can identify the possible nexus of computational and living corporeality as a site of great aesthetic productivity. Mitchell argues that the four fallacies are symptomatic of the lack of what she calls human-like common sense in AI. Common sense is assumed to be where formalization, modeling, and representation fail. Perhaps, however, these failures point to more fundamental complexities that resist formalization and to the constitutive blind spots of any representation. Rather than helping artists to solve problems, AI can expose them and shed new light on where the aesthetic lurks in our failures. Thank you.